learn the greats. And I'll tell you, the biggest disappointment is learning they're all fucking human. Mm -hmm. And behind all the personas and all the marketing and the branding and the bullshit that might make them known, it doesn't make them integral. Mm -hmm. And there's a massive gap in the world of influence that separates integrity from manipulation, and that's what it is. It's ethics, it's values, it's integrity. So for me, how I operate in my life is the highest values first. This is the indicator of how I operate in my life and only attract people, places, things, experience that are of the highest value. And once in a while when I attract one that isn't of the highest value frequency, I take responsibility for having a tolerance that allowed that to filter through the cracks in my life. I take responsibility for it, I'm not a victim. So first thing I tell you, think about the people here. I was, I was reading through these, I saw some of Brandon's stories, I was peeking, I'm like, I can't be there, but I still wanna be there with their outcomes. I wanna show up and give them what they want. But it didn't matter what you want, because you know what most people value and want the most in their life? You, 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 all of us. You know what your brain thinks about? Go sit at BioCyber and have them hook you up to machines and do somatic work. And find out what you really think about most often, and you'll find out all of us. Every one of us here, even though we're all wearing different clothes, different style, we talk different, we got different swagger, we all want one thing. Money. Do you want money? Yes. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you all want money? Yes. yes. Oh, we all have that in common. Huh. It's the one thing we all think about in common the most. What else do we all want? Freedom. Can't say no to it. It's cool. Love and connection. Love. Love. Because <laughs> if I ask any of you, do you want love? What are you going to tell me? Yeah. Every part of you. Your body answers for your mouth does, right? <laughs> what else do we want to feel a sense of? Important. I'm going to try P for purpose. Mm -hmm. We want to feel like our effort, our life, has some meaning to other lives. So look, if you understand, this is what we all value first. Most people coming at you, they want one thing. They want your knowledge and your network so they can add more of this to their bank account. They're being responsible to getting what their mind's telling them to go after. That's why most people are willing to manipulate, cheat, lie. Who here has seen, uh, oh, what's that HBO movie, my... Consigliere uh, told me about this movie on HBO. I watched it. I wanted to vomit. Fake famous. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's about buying followers and becoming an influencer by buying followers and likes. Mm. And they do it. This movie, they take these people and turn them in to live influencers getting sponsorships and like fake famous is real. Mm -hmm. Money, love, purpose, and then that's broadcast on Instagram, and we live in that world, I got children, what? <laughs> so, back to the game. If you start here, be clear what you value. When I tell you I value and I value, I said, I value high energy, high standards, and an environment that supports that. That's what I value. Because I found that environment shifts an identity more than a mouth. You take a broke-ass homeless person, and you go, hand him $10, see if his life changes. Take a broke-ass homeless person, say, come with me, man. Put a clean set of clothes on him, give him a shower, and sit in the nicest hotel in town and give that man a meal across from you. That will change that man's identity. Because he will have to fight with feeling valuable or not. And he will realize someone believed I was valuable enough to have that. I said, you're more valuable than that, and so are your people. You guys are sitting in an enchantment resort because if you're a leader, you hold people to a higher standard of values or they don't show up in your life. And you demonstrate intolerance to anything except for exceptional values. That's why I'm in the enchantment right now. Because I said I'm intolerant. <laughs> That's real talk. I said, I want to show up and I want to get my greatest energy. So I don't know if I can be there in the morning. I've been gone 10 days. I miss my kids. I want to show up on fire. I want to show up and give my heart. So who here is willing for the rest of this to listen with theirs? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not going to do some planned shit then. I, I brought some logical things because I didn't have slides. I'm like, I'll write it on a whiteboard. I asked you guys, you got a whiteboard. It was good enough. But I want to share my heart because I didn't even plan to hear. I, I didn't plan to hear with this man. I had to share with his. And I walked in the door. I was like, okay, you're right. God said, let it flow like a river. It's coming. 
<laughs> right? This man inspired me. This is real talk. We didn't plan that. We haven't even had a conversation in real life outside the clubhouse. You need no, no, this is perfect. So check this out. When you align in values with someone and you want the same things outside of just this, I don't give a fuck about money. I make that shit in my sleep. Literally. My team's out spinning plates for me. I lead and I teach other people how to lead. I'm safe. I'm comfortable. My rent's paid. My house is paid. My car's paid. My kid's tuition. I'm not stressed about this. I do that on my own, baby. I'm here for your money. I ain't trying to pitch any of you. Love? Man, I love myself. <laughs> Some people think I'm narcissistic, right? I am filled with myself, capital S, the impersonal self, not my little mini ego self. And I got a lot of love to give. And the only way I'm able to give that love to any of you is if you have the trust and respect in yourself to receive it. I have unconditional love to give. Most people go bullshit. I'm like, I have unconditional love to give you. And when our trust and respect matches your ability to receive that, I'll give it all to you. Until then, you're a threat. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say you're a threat, it's because I got that love to give to my children, to my family, to people to pay me, that if I don't show up with fire to give them my best, people die. Mm. Right? Think about that. It's real talk. So back to values. It's so easy when you align your values beyond money, love, and purpose. I love connection with other humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to show up in service. I love to show up in communion. I like to show up and unify a tribe. That's what I talk about. Yeah. And I'm here! Because these guys stepped into my values. And I saw that in them before they saw it in themselves. I said, I won't let you. In fact, me and this guy, what, we know each other three years on the phone probably? First conversation we had, I'm like, so, how are you doing? Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll get out of that business partnership. That's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't tolerate that shit. You're high value. Yeah. I see high value. I've recruited hundreds of thousands of people through all my other people's companies and network marketing, all of it, name it. You're high value. Was that one of the first thing I told you? That's uncomfortable to tell people. I won't tolerate the low standard you're tolerating from yourself. I see more value in you. Let's start there. Because then when we align in values, you know where we always end up? Naturally. I heard this man say this too. Vision. Vision. When I meet someone and we, we align in values and I trust you and you trust me, I respect you and you respect me, I count on you to take shots that I can't see coming at me when we're back to back. And because we know where we're headed, like we're running the same way. There's no tug of war. So when we align in vision, and this was my vision, my vision was a Sedona experience where you got to feel the magic of this place. Didn't you, when you were pulling up, feel like you were on planet Mars? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's talking, didn't you feel like we were at church? <laughs> on planet Mars. <laughs> I didn't want to show up and give you guys jet lag, and I didn't want to show up in a little chamber. Nope. Right? Nope. And, and I show up, and this guy is leading the way. And I go, man, we share a lot of values, and woo! <laughs> this was the vision I imagined, stepping into the fire, stepping into light, energy. I walked in the room, all your antennas were up, and this guy was just delivering. And you're sharing his vision. What brought him here? Who here received that vision and felt that vision and wanted to bring some of that vision into your own life? Mm -hmm. You felt where he's taken himself since that vision penetrated his soul and spirit and he's created that life for himself. Who here was like inspired to have a, a bigger vision for yourself a little bit? Yep. Naturally, easily, effortlessly. He didn't have to yell at you. Even though it may sound aggressive, you were yelling. <laughs> so, hey, I get, I get judged as aggressive and assertive all the time. And I'm like, that's because you's all weak. And when you get strong, you'll say thank you. <laughs> it's true. 
When you align your values, you align your vision. You know what's easy always after that? Mission. It's easy to orientate the mission when we align your vision. The mission is, hey man, we're out here at sea. I want to get to shore. Hey man, we should go toward that island, that island. We don't got the same vision. So when we start swimming, we're going in different directions. We're all going to drown. Right? Buoy to buoy isn't going to look the same. We're not going to share the same vision. The mission's going to be horrid. That's why when we get here, and right here now, we're in the mission of serving. I didn't know. I've kind of met you online, and you know me through him enough. And I know this guy. The rest of you, other than this man's voice, I didn't know him, but I knew that voice. <laughs> Man. I didn't know. But I knew their values. I knew they were willing to step up and lead. And I knew anyone willing to follow their guidance probably operates with those same level of values. We probably shared the same vision. And here we are in the mission together on the same boat headed toward the same shore in Enchantment Resort. Easily, naturally. Wasn't that hard, was it? I go, here's what to do, here's what to say, call me when it's done. <laughs> really? It was good. Like, all right, gotta make this shit happen. And that's why I operate amongst my teams, with my family, with my kids, and I'm one guy. Sometimes I'm a little more nurturing and soft with my children, right? They're developing still, and they don't understand the differences of all humans yet, but like, why wouldn't I? So when you align in values, you align in vision, your mission's like, okay, we know where we're headed now. Let's, you grab that oar. Yep. You grab that oar. If we had oars, I'd hand them out to all of you. And if we aren't on the same mission, what happens? We go in circles. Mm. Okay. So what comes next? Naturally and easily. We set some goals. We put some buoys. We go, hey, let's go buoy to buoy to buoy to buoy. And then we assign actions. I almost missed a whole letter there. Because you know what? It doesn't matter how it's spelled. Because we get here, we fuck up the way it's spelled. We, one, one of us is pulling harder because we want to get there more. And we all adjust and we adapt and adjust and adapt and we get to goals together. We high five, we celebrate. It feels like it's worth it. We all find greater meaning. And there's a stupid phrase, too many people overuse, but it's so true. We can go faster by ourselves. But we can go way further together. And I've been able to help people build multi-million dollar machines that they can then remove themselves from by finding people with values that tap into their vision, that they can then enroll into the mission and say, hey, what do you think you can do? Well, I don't know, I'll run for you. How fast can you run? I don't know. Well, let's see, run as fast as you can, let's measure it. Damn, that was pretty good. You, you ran that fast, how long can you sustain that? And we just measure accountability and responsibility. We look at the, the scoreboard until these actions create a ridiculous amount of this, ridiculous amount of this, and that comes as an easy byproduct. Most people are chasing their tails. It's the truth. When you, when you align in values, you want to solve some real world problems for people that delivers relief from suffering and pain, and you have a vision of a world with more peace, and you share that with other people, people will get behind you and run. They'll run, even if it's not their dream. Those goals and those actions come easily, and money and love and purpose follows you like wake behind a ship. You don't have to focus on vision boards. You focus on where your heart's being put in the present moment, day after day after day. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Because most of my actions in my life, some people think I'm crazy when I tell them all the, the rituals and the things I do to keep it on the tracks, to manage celebrity brands and a publishing company now and software and tech companies and my own mentorship practice. Like, then my kids are all homeschooled. Dance, and they've got tap, ballet, hip hop, piano, uh, you name it. Like, it's a lot of plates to spin. And how do you, how do you uh, manage all those things? You keep coming back here. And for me, I wanna share something because I just came from this event, it's called Guardians. And I had such a personal, powerful experience there. Before I get to this next segment, I shared tiny pieces with you guys. 
It's one of the reasons I hide out here in Sedona and deleted most of my digital profile. I have less than a thousand followers on Instagram. But my, my, hey, where's my phone? <laughs> my, my contact list is legendary, Le ultimately legendary. And one of the reasons so many of the highest level people on the planet, influencers, trust me, is because not, not because I sign NDAs, but because I protect them in the highest capacity. I don't just protect their space and their time. I protect their energy, right? Who here has ever like got off a flight and it was a nightmare because there was a baby puking and pooping and you know, like someone complaining to the stewardess every three minutes, like who's had that experience? How, how much energy you got getting off that flight? Sucked. Yeah, some people are like, you're a snob when I demand first class when I'm, they're like, we want you to speak. I'm like, all right, first class minimum, highest accommodations. And they're like, you snob. I'm like, you want me showing up tired from baby puke? <laughs> <laughs> you know, really though, I wouldn't do that to my wife. Because when I get to the hotel with my wife, I don't want her to be wiped out on vacation, <laughs> right? So I want to teach you guys today some of my basics. And these basics are beyond what most people will even focus on once they know the basics. I heard you say it. Like, you've been in a lot of self-development events. I can feel it. You want to know the saddest part of going to self-development events for years and investing millions? I think Maybe. Yeah. Are here. <laughs> <laughs> The saddest part, and I remember this when I start every talk at every event, especially when you're the first person on that stage in front of an audience I'm seeing, all I can think about when I'm standing in front of the audience, statistics, data, history. Because I've stood in front of a lot of people on stage. Just was recently, last year at the beginning of COVID, you actually met me through the All In Tribe. Those of you guys that know like Alex Sines, Carlos, and Sal, they run a, a pretty sizable real estate training organization in Phoenix. I spoke at this event and there was this woman there who had such a vibrant soul. She was a beautiful person and she was in a wheelchair. She was disabled, but she had two beautiful kids and her husband there with her. And like, she was so lit up. She was so inspired, right? And she was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna change my life. I'm going to like have all the things I ever wanted. I'm doing this thing. I'm going to be the best student they've ever had. And that was an event I keynoted and, and spoke at. A few weeks ago, my client, Alex, he was telling me about this woman. I go, oh, is that the girl in the wheelchair? He goes, no, man, she, she quit. Her and husband got divorced in the middle of COVID. That's what I think about every time I'm getting on stage. I'm like... Man, someone's gonna be excited and come up for a picture and tell me how inspiring it was and how they're gonna do something about it. And a year from now, I'm gonna find out they blew their fucking brains out. And that might sound a little extreme, but I've experienced it. Where I'm like, hey, where's that one dude? Oh yeah, killed himself, man. What? And guess what? I was one of those people who invested a stupid fortune of money. I could be sitting on a real estate empire I could have spun off a whole bunch of franchise businesses, set them right around investing 160,000 in Tony Robbins and over here with Jay Abraham and going to become trainers for these motherfuckers and feeling more inadequate and more insecure because now I'm comparing myself against the world's greatest. Figuring, hmm, why isn't all this stuff working for me? How come I'm not applying all this stuff? I know what to do. How come I'm not doing it? Is this worthiness? And I've got, I've got Tony's people going, I think you need to do some more tapping. I think you need a little bit more EMDR. <laughs> uh, you got some daddy issues you might need to work on. You might need to go see Byron Katie one more time. <laughs> so I told these guys I'd show up. Actually, he came out here. I'm like, add more time to the calendar when I'm out there. Because I'm going to share some of the personal soul sciences after I share some of the universal soul sciences. If I run over a little bit, I hope you guys are cool with that. I mean, you should pay 10 grand an hour to share what I'm about to share with you. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that so that you fucking consider what I'm sharing at that level of value as if you paid for it. Because I don't share it very often anymore. I'd rather write books about it so people quit asking me if they can pick my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's real talk, you know? So, so that's what I found. I found that the gap between the people that even have all the knowledge and they feel inadequate and insecure because they're not applying it. They don't lack the information. 
They lack the motivation to apply it. They lack the energy and the power. And they're deluded. I had a mentor one time say to me, Jeremy, you're one of the smartest dudes I've ever met. You're a ninja, dude. You don't need any other information. You're one of the smartest people I know. You're like Einstein, bro. We get it. 160 IQ, but here's your problem. That IQ is divided by your focus. How many things you, how many plates you spin in, homie? Divide that 160 by all those different things, and that's your IQ in any one of those given things. You're practically an idiot. And I was like, oh, oh, he's right. And I got really clear in my life about the things I need to say no to every single day, which is way more important than the things I'm saying yes to. Because when I say yes to these things, it doesn't matter if I'm still saying yes to these things. You can crank on the fire of the hot air balloon, both hands. But if you've got cords tied to the ground, it doesn't matter. Right? So I I focused really heavily on the daily rituals in alignment with the basics of soul science. Maslow's hierarchy, I'm going to talk about some of that. Consciousness scale, I'm going to talk about some of that. But I've created some of my terms around it so it's a little simplified. Now we're going to get into the universal depths. I don't even know what to call it anymore. I call it soul GPS because you're born from the stars and that sounds like some crazy shit, but I'm not sure what I can. So, <laughs> guys, my value today that I want for you to receive is to know the influences that are unseen inside you so that you can operate more effectively because I truly believe if you study consciousness at any level, uh, elementary level or advanced level, you'll find that, that most human beings are struggling every single day, even the best of us, the very best, the celebrities you see on TV, even worse, because now they have greater expectations on them than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. and, and so most people are at war inside. Their thoughts at 50 to 90,000 thoughts a day, just for a, an executive, an entrepreneur, double, triple that. 300 to 500,000 thoughts a day for some entrepreneurs, okay? Got that many thoughts. How many feelings a day do you have? Shit, our feelings are traveling everywhere. You drive here, it's like traffic. I had traffic back me up like nine extra minutes. I'm like, you're a liar, Waze. You said, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, I even checked the time, right? <laughs> I'm like, I better stop and get a juice. In fact, that's what I do. I'm like, if I, if I feel like I'm running late, I slow down. Because I believe that war that's fighting all the time between our thoughts and our emotions is the greatest indicator of that which we are not. And that we are the electrical energy that that radio of our thoughts and our feelings is tuning our electrical voltage to. And it's responsible for experiences like this that are a higher vision and higher value. And when you're down here in the shit, you can't see anything. And there is a way to tap into a modern currency where no matter what's going on in the world, whether there's diseases or, or whatever's going on in the economy, you can tap into a modern currency. I call this my inheritance. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I, need, I need to find my juice. <clears throat> If you think about it, I, like there's some people, they're so concerned with the news, right? I think there's way more people that have had their their brainwashed more than their hands this last year, <laughs> <laughs> right? 